So I'm Jessie Adcock. Um, I'm the Chief Technology Officer for the City of Vancouver, and I too be nervous, <laughs> but I always am uh, whenever we do any of these things. And what I want to talk to you a little bit about today is how the world around us is changing. And I think we've all heard quite a bit around the fourth industrial revolution and the role that technology is playing in changing the world around us. None of us are immune from it. We had our first industrial revolution that was all about steam, water, and mechanical production equipment. Then we had our second electrical revolution, the division of labor and mass production were invented. Finally, we saw the third revolution, which was around electronics and IT. But what we have now is something that combines um, cyber and physical streams. So there's the combination of the world we live in, the physical world we live in, combined with our smartphones, creates innovative opportunities to add layers of stuff that is invisible. So like this morning we heard in James Comey's testimony about technical intrusion and how technical intrusion, something that we cannot see, has the ability to bring down entire nations, tamper with elections, have effects on large masses of population. Now that's the context in which the world is changing. And the reason it's important is because it's changing cities along with it. And people mostly live in cities. And as the integration of these systems escalates, I think what we'll see is a combination of new ways of living, but also new opportunities. And what I want to talk about today is how Vancouver and the West is uniquely positioned um, to take advantage of these opportunities. Oftentimes, we think about innovation happening outside the context of government. And because it's true, democratic institutions are hard to understand, processes are hard to understand. I've been with the city now about three years, and it's taken me quite a while to understand how, how one addresses mayor and council in a chamber. Things like Robert's Rules that we didn't learn about in school, and yet are part of these structures. Um, I have an 11-year-old daughter, and the idea of her walking into a chamber and deferring to these types of rules is just so unimaginable to me. Um, you know, my daughter and their generation, if they want a park bench, they'll crowdfund it and they'll put it where they want to put it. They, they may not have the uh, deference to convention and protocol the way we still do, and our generation still does. So I don't know if we'll all live to see it, but I think we'll see different patterns emerging in city, cities and around other um, areas where people congregate that result in different patterns of governance and different types of communities. Now, in terms of what is happening in the innovation space, because there are so much to innovate in the cities that we live in, what we're seeing is new products being generated. And what's special about Vancouver is that the type of innovation happening here, and again, the West, and I'm using Vancouver because it's the city that I work for, but this is something that happens in the West, is that there's a unique connection between people and the environment here that creates a certain type of social conscience and empathy for the world around us that's generating special kinds of innovative qualities. The other thing that motivates us here is not necessarily always driven by a sort of capital, capitalist um, agenda. A lot of what we're doing is often driven by how can we actually just continue to afford to live here because it's amazing. And so the innovation is coming from a desire to want to stay and not to leave. So as the pace of urbanization accelerates, the, this, this experience is not unique to the West. I think what we'll see is that cities will fast become the focal points for driving collaboration and fostering growth between various sectors, various types of communities, and various people. Traditionally, what we see is that we don't have government working together with private sector. But what we're finding now as we move forward is that there is, you can't disconnect the two. They need to be together. And a lot of the opportunity coming in the private sector now is in the innovation of government. So is Vancouver or the West winning? Well, it is because a new growth model and economic vision is emerging. And we hear about that a lot. Not only are we innovating, but we're innovating in ways, and we heard about it with LNG earlier, in a way that we think about how we waste less. We think about how to be smart about the innovation, how to produce and deploy our services and our products. Canada has a great history of producing large firms, but they also have a great history of those large firms collapsing. So how do we in, 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 in the West think about producing those great firms and keeping them here? 
So there's the usual suspects that we need to foster innovation like capital and relationships and talent and collaborations. But then there's the not so usual suspects. And that's where Vancouver's innovators are global leaders for a new urban strategy. Not only are they stimulating growth and creating jobs, but we're leading in innovation and technology. We're seeking an end to poverty. We're trying to mitigate climate change. We're looking and searching for reconciliation, and we're making strong local connections. We're innovating with mindfulness and a sensibility for where the world is going. Generally, we're building a better, healthier, more resilient place that is supported um, by tight connections. So why is, does it work in the West? Well, my argument is that the West is a microcosm of diversity that works positively. We balance social, economic, and environmental impacts when we innovate. We have a natural connection to our environment. We have empathy for social issues. We have multiple challenges. And there's no project that is now not a tech project. And as a result, the innovation coming out of Vancouver is especially unique. We also have a very rich talent pool supported by strong academic institutions. We have a thriving technology ecosystem. We also have a bias towards collaboration. If you hear from any of the sectors in British Columbia, they come back and they tell their stories. They talk about how collaboration within the industry here is what fosters continued growth. We also have a very unique city building model. I'm not sure if you know, but the Vancouver brand was recently valued at $31.5 billion. That's quite something, and that is deeply connected to the fact that we have strategies that don't just look at economic growth, but we have our greenest city strategy, and we have a healthy city strategy. We will soon have a creative city strategy. We have a digital strategy. But it's that mindfulness that is reflective of the people that live in the city that's creating that spark for innovation. And so that's the thought that I'll leave you with today, which is that because global citizens are here, global solutions will be built here as well. <laughs>